Charge motion control plates. Valves, plates, CMCVs, what? Charge motion control valves. What are they? What do they do? And why you shouldn't remove them from your Mustang unless you plan on going with- I just got done removing the Ford Racing intake manifold and I'm now about to install an OEM brand new intake manifold with the charge motion valves. Now obviously you're wondering why in the world are you doing that? You just put it on. So after I finished installing the stage two parts, immediately got the car dynoed and although the car is making higher peak power, I found that I lost about 35 to 40 pounds of torque in the mid range. After I left the dyno all disappointed, I immediately started researching the purpose of charge motion valves. I sort of knew they had something to do with torque and emissions, blah, 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 but honestly, I really didn't do my research. Anyway, the most interesting piece of or helpful piece of information I found was posted way back in March of 2006 on one of those really hard to look at billboard websites. And I think you guys are going to find it really interesting, so I'm just going to read you a snippet of that post. Since the Mod Motor's inception, its cylinder heads have always been plagued with poor charge motion characteristics, especially at lower engine speeds where mixture is critical for good torque and emissions. A series of bandages over the years from swirl dams in the combustion chamber to inlet manifold runner control and four valve heads helped matters incrementally but never made for a satisfying meal. Now after putting up with this state of affairs for the last 14 years, it'd be 26 now, the fix is here and it's beautiful. At the low end of the power band, the CMCV creates turbulence by inserting itself in the air path just after the fuel injector. The partial obstruction causes a tumbling action in the runner that asserts itself as a more combustible, quicker burning mixture. While the CMCV decreases its intervention as engine RPM climbs, the valve timing increases for both intake valves and the exhaust valve. What that post is saying is that the CMCVs and the camshafts work together to increase torque in the low to mid range. But let's talk about what specifically the CMCVs are doing to achieve that. Now here you can see the charge motion control valves fully closed and here they are fully open. Now what are we looking at? We're looking at the bottom of the intake manifold and each one of these represents the bottom of an intake runner. So we got four on this side, four on the other. And then on the S197 three valve, well there's three valves. There's two intake ports and one exhaust port. So you can imagine an intake port right here valve and an intake valve right there. You can see when it's fully closed that one valve is completely blocked off while another is like 60% blocked off. Effectively what this is doing is increasing the back pressure in the intake manifold and thus increasing the speed at which air will come through here by decreasing the diameter. This is equivalent to whenever you've watered a lawn and you had a hose with poor water pressure what would you do? You'd slide your thumb over the nozzle, thus increasing back pressure in the hose and the pressure differential between inside the hose and the outside air, and that would make the fluid come out of the hose at a higher rate of speed, thus increasing the surface area of the lawn you were able to water from a single point. So this hole right here you see is where the injector sits. This is where fuel's coming in, right? So when you get that air coming in at a high rate of speed and you get the fuel injecting at a very high rate of speed, right? This is a very high PSI those injectors squirt fuel out of. When they're closed or you have a high air speed, they're gonna, you're gonna get a better mixture, a better explosion, and more torque. Now you can imagine if at idling or low speeds, if these control valves were completely removed, the injector is basically going to shoot the fuel onto the sides of the intake port and it's just going to leak down and you're going to get a poor combustion. So what Ford came up with was with these, you know, dynamic valves that change their degree with how much throttle you're giving the car. So it's like, you know, when you get to high RPMs, full blown throttle, they try to get out of the way as much as possible. Now this is where the Ford Performance intake manifold comes in because these are just big gaping holes on that, right? There are no charge motion valves, it's completely open. 
So you're really only seeing the gains if you got a lot of air naturally coming through your engine or you have forced induction. Which brings me to under what circumstances is it worth buying the Ford Racing intake manifold? And it's kind of limited actually. So either one, you're building a naturally aspirated drag car and you're gonna go with four tenths. So you're always up above 5,000 RPM. The other is if you're gonna go boost, but specifically you're getting either a pro charger or a turbo because when you get either of those configurations on your car you're keeping a man you still need an intake manifold which is unlike a supercharger you know a traditional twin screw supercharger that sits right on top of the intake manifold in that scenario you just remove it all together so to summarize if you're going to get the Ford performance intake manifold make sure you're either planning on getting a turbo or a pro charger because you definitely don't want any charge motion control valves in the way because you're going to have high psi and it's going to be blasting air down those intake runners if you're deciding to go with a supercharger total waste of money anyway it's time to test the hypothesis get this back on the car get the car back on the dyno and compare the charts I just got done overlaying the dyno chart so we can do a thorough comparison rather than just looking at peak numbers. What we're going to compare is the stage two numbers, obviously, with the stock intake manifold versus the Ford Performance intake manifold versus the stage one numbers we did last summer. Now all of these runs have been done on the same dyno and for my keen viewers out there who noticed that the Mustang was actually on a Mustang dyno in the last video, that was just more out of curiosity. I've seen rumblings on the internet that maybe dyno jets are liberal with their numbers. That wasn't what I found, it was a difference of like nine horsepower. But whatever, forget all that, why don't you guys jump in here and let's compare some dyno charts. The first chart we're going to look at is the baseline run we did back in the summer of 2017. And the only parts on the car that are relevant to the power numbers is it has a cold air intake with a very typical 91R Bama tune. So we can see back then the car was able to put down 292 horsepower and 307 pounds of torque around 4400 RPM. Pretty predictable, pretty respectable numbers for a 4.6 liter with this configuration. The next chart I'm going to show you has all the stage 2 parts on the car which includes the long tube headers, X-pipe, one piece aluminum drive shaft, the new throttle body, and the Ford Performance intake manifold. And it's also running another Bama tune. You know, you log in, you put it on the parts you have in the car, and then they send you the new tune. Now immediately you can see this is very disappointing. While the car did eke out 10 more horsepower, uh, peak horsepower above 5,500 RPM for a grand total of 302, I lost 13 pounds of peak torque at 4,400. RPM. Now I know earlier I said I lost 35 to 40 pounds of torque and now that I'm really taking a close look here I can see it's more like 20 to 25 but when you've dumped that much money into your car that looks like the Grand Canyon. Now some of you might be saying well if you're gonna get that intake manifold you need to get camshafts. If I do get camshafts all my power gains are gonna be above 5,000 RPM and all I'm gonna do is lose more torque in the low to mid range. So I guess it's just more of a question of how you want your car to run. The next chart I'm gonna show you is the exact same configuration on the car except I've swapped out the Ford Performance intake manifold for a brand new stock OEM one with the CMCVs. We can see that there is a significant improvement over both previous charts in torque and horsepower throughout the band. While there is some compression of horsepower in the top end, this is significantly better. The car was able to eke out even a few more horsepower for a total of 305, and our torque increased to 316, basically at the same point at 4400 RPM. All right, so these are not the final stage two numbers. I've since had the car retuned by somebody else, actually the same person who built that filthy sounding Z06. 
he did a great job. I'm super stoked on the results. The chart looks way better than any of these and I will reveal those in the next video, which will be, I promise, the stage two video. Hopefully you can see now while there's, why there's been a delay between videos and why I haven't been putting, you know, updating you guys in the power numbers. I've been trying to solve this problem here. I gotta wait for parts to come in. I gotta wait for a dyno spot to open up. I gotta wait for a tuning spot to open up because everyone's bringing out their toys right now. Anyway, in that ne next video, we'll re reveal the official power numbers, acceleration numbers. We'll talk about how the car feels and what's gonna go down in stage three. So if you're interested in seeing all that, you know what to do, and hopefully I'll see you next time.